Evening all, uh, here we are, uh, Sermon Mark 2. Uh, apologies for what happened this morning on the stream, I'm trying to work out what it is, but um, it's beyond our <laughs> technical capabilities at the moment, uh, but we'll work it out. Um, thanks to those that have uh, messaged to say, don't worry about it, don't stress too much, that it didn't go quite right. Um, but actually, uh, thanks to particularly to Yvonne who just said uh, she was glad that A it wasn't her, <laughs> her broadband that was the issue but the technical issues that were going on um, but a reminder she said you know maybe this is just something that we need to hear and for whatever reason it didn't happen this morning um, and I have to say I did I did feel well A could I repeat it next week just not worry about it what was out there is out there um, but actually I feel it's really important what, what uh, I prepared for this week. Not because I prepared it, but because I just really sense that maybe for some uh, it's going to be helpful for you. Hazel mentioned this week uh, in one of our conversations how this image from Ezekiel 47 um, is really amazing. And uh, the way that when we think about a river that flows out, it's not like this image is a dam that breaks in the temple and the river rushes out and the water goes out and then kind of it loses momentum. This is a, a river that as it keeps on going, it flows out and gets deeper as it goes out. Uh, the only thing I can ever kind of fathom or connect with this story is uh, having been to the privilege of going to Niagara Falls and seeing the, the sheer power of that waterfall that goes and goes and goes. And one of the things I find amazing about Niagara Falls or is that um, you can't turn it off. <laughs> it just keeps on going. Um, and this power and this water. Uh, and this image that we have in Ezekiel 47, this river flowing out, is quite incredible. That as the further it goes out, the deeper it gets. Uh, but this morning we're thinking, or this evening as I'm recording this, uh, we're thinking about that journey that the man makes as he wanders back with God. And he sees along the riverbanks the life and particularly the healing that's taking place. And so as we've listened, hopefully on the, the live stream, as, you, as I've cut this in, you would have picked up on the story that Louise brought us from John, um, John 9. As a church, we believe in healing. We believe that God makes a difference and breaks into people's lives. Uh, we often have people at the front of our church where we lay hands on them. Uh, we come before them. We speak out prayers. We stand together alongside one another. And of course, actually, at this time, for, it's going to be a while before we can do that confidently. Not because we don't believe in prayer, but just because of the, the social distancing that's uh, taking place and the, the way we have to deal with that as a church in the weeks to come. So I want to raise the issue of healing this week uh, from Ezekiel 47 and what it says to us. And that's why I think it's really important that I share my sermon uh, from my uh, my study. This is where everything's going on during the week at the moment uh, when I'm working from home. And uh, one of my is I get to have my own mug for coffee as well during it. Which is great. So uh, here we go. I believe in healing. I believe there is a need for healing too. Not just from COVID-19, but from the sadness, the hurt, the loneliness and the damage to people's mental health at this time. In fact, it's been going on well before COVID struck, before we knew anything about it. John 9 verse 1 says, As he went along, that's Jesus, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The first thing that struck me about this is the man had been born blind from birth. This is a significant issue for his life for a long time, through no fault of his own. Now like us, maybe you're a bit like the disciples, is that when we see a situation like this, the first question, that age-old question we ask is, why? Why did this happen? Why was this man born blind? I wouldn't be surprised if you're asking that question in these recent weeks. Maybe even today as you listen. 
Why? The short answer is I don't know, and maybe that's not a very um, that's not a very satisfactory answer to you this morning. And I don't understand why this pandemic has struck. I certainly don't believe all the conspiracy theories of some of which we see on social media and on the internet, etc. Uh, doing the rounds, um, yeah, I'm not sure about many of those, if not all of them. I also don't believe that God has struck this upon us to teach us a lesson. So why? Why now? Why this? Often when we ask that question, we can be looking for someone or something to blame. And often we can do the same with God. We look to blame him for what is going on in our own lives. We can immediately, immediately blame him for the failures of our world, the failures we have made ourselves. But this is, this is unusual because this man is born blind and for the disciples they need to know why. They need to know the answer, a solution to this situation. Jesus' response is clear. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God, works of God might be displayed in him. So there's always a purpose in what Jesus does and this miracle is no different. There is always purpose in his words and his ministry. In this passage, it is the disciples that need the answer. And although we don't know the whole backstory of this blind man, there is no sense in which he is even going out searching for Jesus to get healed in the first place. This man receives a blessing of purpose. Purpose of God. Purpose of Jesus giving him freedom. This purpose is throughout Jesus' ministry to bring sight by physical and spiritual. I would encourage you to ask the questions of God about your own needs and the needs of others. But I would urge you even more to be open to the answer and to receive healing for what may have been there for a very long time. Yes, we may want to know why, but wouldn't we love to be free? from that even more. Maybe you need to accept not just how things are in these moments, but believe what can be in the future. Maybe you have accepted these things and don't want to trouble Jesus. We don't get the sense that the man didn't want to trouble him. He was just about going about his daily business. Whatever it is, open yourselves up today to hear from God and to be encouraged by him and maybe even be healed by him. John 9 verse 4 says, As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming, and no one can work. While I'm in, in the world, I am the light of the world. Now I believe that God uses all circumstances to bring his glory to earth. Whatever the reason why... Jesus takes the opportunity to offer this man what he needs. Sight. Vision. Healing gives him this joy. It gives us that joy. A joy that we desperately need. Not just at the moment, but in our lives all the time. Jesus offers that to meet those in need. Sorry, Jesus offers to meet with us throughout his life. He offers to meet people in his ministry, where they are. Freedom he gives from that inner pain and even from that mental torment. He's not restricted by the physical body. He even raises someone to life. And he makes that same offer to you. Whatever your issue, your need is this today... He can do something about it. Now I want to make a personal plea with you. God is still in the business of healing. Even when we are socially distanced, God is never distant. God's holy and healing Holy Spirit is close at hand. So if you do want to ask for prayer for healing particularly, please do contact me. Connect with the Salvation Army, connect with a local church. And find those that want to pray for healing in your life. You can contact me through the, the Salvation Army. 
the number, the email that we've given out previously. Don't think that you can't bother God with this stuff at the moment because he's got too much other stuff going on. God has time. In fact, he has all the time in the world to be bothered about what's going on in your life. Maybe you consider your issue just too insignificant, not that important, but God works in the detail, even the smallest thing. Maybe you're convinced that whatever you ask is actually just too big. Well, I believe that God is a miraculous God and his work can be done on big scale as well as in those smaller moments. Maybe you're worried that God won't answer. He won't fulfill your prayer. Well, I know that God's passion is for his people, for the people of the world, to discover just how faithful he is. What a wonderful story this is, that this man who doesn't ask for anything receives the greatest blessing. Receives a blessing over his life. This isn't random. This is Jesus displaying the power of heaven in the life of someone that is vulnerable. To those that need it. To those that need that change in their lives. God can do all things. As Paul says that he can do immeasurably more than we could ever imagine. Take that opportunity and offer yourself to be healed. Of course, healing comes in many, many different ways. And I just want to pause at this point to pay tribute and uh, say well done to the um, uh, not, uh, Newark and Sherwood Trust Hospitals who have had a fantastic report from the CQC not too long ago. They, their report wasn't brilliant, but they've done an amazing work over these last few years. And I know firsthand what a, an amazing job they've done locally to succeed in this. So whether it's doctors or if you are an OT or an ambulance uh, driver or paramedic or admin staff, or whatever, you've played a part in people being healed and you've given them the best care possible. Jesus' role in healing, his technique was slightly more obscure and I'm not sure that if you go into a, an outpatient, this is what you'll receive. Jesus, after saying this, he spat on the ground, made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told them, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. This means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. First of all, I'm not going to offer to spit mud and rub it in, spit in mud and rub it on your eyes. Don't worry about that. Plus, it's pretty impossible at the moment in, in lockdown, but I wouldn't anyway. But I do believe that God wants to bring healing to your life, to our lives, in the situation in a way that connects with you. I have no idea why this was the way that Jesus needed to do it with this man. This man in this passage, however, is committed to following Jesus' commands. And he lets him do what Jesus needs to do. And he goes and washes. And he can see. This man, for me, is ready and willing for healing to take place in his life. I really love this line that, as I mentioned, this man went and washed and came home seeing. This amazing image, this joyful description of his experience of his encounter with Jesus Christ. Are you ready to receive healing? Are you ready to do as Jesus commanded? To let him do the most weird and wonderful thing in your life? It may not be mud in your eyes, but it may be a freeing of something that you have had in you for a long time. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to let Jesus do what he needs to do in your life for you to be free? 
and for you to be healed. Of course, you still have to make that journey and follow Jesus' commands. You need to go and follow what he asks you to do, just like the man did. But these last few lines, these last few words, and came, he came home seeing. There is a rejoicing there, a celebration. The neighbours are out asking, what on earth is going on? Surely that guy was blind. He's always been blind. Why today is something going on, something different in his life? Let Jesus do a work of restoration in you today. Let him bring healing to your life. As this river in Ezekiel 47 flows into your home, it meets you just where you are. And it's not the trickling bit, it's the deep bit. As you look on its banks, you'll see the life teeming around you. And just like that man who sees, we will see the anticipation and hope of Christ. Christ's healing, salvation, making us whole. I'm making us anew. I believe in healing. Absolutely I do. And I believe that God is still working in our world today to bring healing to people's lives. I don't understand the why. I don't always understand the why not particularly. But I believe that it is reliant on our church today being open. And I'm not talking about our building. I'm talking about our hearts ready to receive God's call to bring healing to others and to be ready to be healed ourselves. For our lives to be open to do what God needs to do in us. That we will see and experience the full extent of his kingdom and purpose in our lives. I pray that today if you need to be healed, you need to receive healing, that you respond. Whether that's contacting me someone from our church a friend begin that process it might take time it might be miraculous but allow God to minister to you right where you are today I pray that you if you are of faith that you pray for those that need to receive healing I pray that our world will be aware of the stories of God's redemptive power and God's healing power I pray that as this river flows into your home, you will experience the goodness, the faithfulness and the abundant God that we have. I pray that you receive healing in the name of Jesus. Let me pray. Father God. I thank you for your mercy and your grace in my life. I thank you for your grace and mercy in our world. And I ask that you will give us open hearts and minds to receive your love. That you will make us responsive to the prayer that you have for us. The prayer that we will come and bow before you, open up our lives and be made anew with you. Lord Jesus, may we be a people that believe in your healing power. May we be ready to see it. May we be ready to ask for it. And may we be ready to receive it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.